I thought my soil was finished. It looked grey, lifeless, and hard as concrete. Not a worm in sight. For months nothing grew right. Seedlings would sprout, turn pale, and stall. I tried compost, fertiliser, even a truckload of topsoil, but the garden stayed dead. Then I tried one simple, natural mix I'd read about from an old Korean farmer. Something he said would wake up the soil. I poured it over one small corner of the bed, walked away, and three days later the ground was alive with earthworms, thousands of them. It was like the soil had been resurrected. Here's exactly what I did, why it works, and how you can do the same thing in your own garden. The secret isn't fertilizer, it's fermented life. Most gardeners try to fix poor soil by adding nutrients. But fertilizer, whether chemical or organic, doesn't fix dead soil. It's like pouring vitamins into a corpse. The real key is biology, the living community of bacteria, fungi and small decomposers that make nutrients available and attract worms. The Korean method that brought my garden back uses a fermented plant and microbe solution that rebuilds the soil food web from scratch. The result is a feast for earthworms and soil microbes, and they do the rest of the work. This mix goes by many names, fermented plant juice, lacto serum, or sometimes microbial activator. Don't let the names scare you. It's simple, cheap, and entirely natural. What it does is release sugars, amino acids and beneficial bacteria that draw worms like magnets. How to make the fermented soil activator that brings worms running? Start with plants that grow fast and strong. Weeds are perfect. Things like comfrey, mugwort, dandelion or even grass clippings. They're packed with nutrients and natural growth hormones. Chop them into small pieces and pack them into a clean plastic or glass container. Add an equal weight of brown sugar or molasses, roughly a one-to-one -one ratio by weight. If you have one kilogram of plant matter, mix in one kilogram of sugar. Stir well until the sugar begins to draw moisture out of the plant tissue. Then cover the container loosely so gases can escape and let it ferment in a warm shaded spot for about five to seven days. After about a week, you'll notice liquid collecting at the bottom. That's your fermented plant juice, or FPJ. Now, you'll want to strain it and store the liquid in a sealed bottle, keeping it away from sunlight. It'll actually keep for months, so you can use it when you need. To apply it, simply mix one tablespoon of FPJ per litre of non-chlorinated water, or roughly a 1 to 500 ratio. Then just pour or spray it over your soil or mulch layer. I like to combine mine with a small dose of lactoserum, which by the way is made by fermenting milk with rice water, because it really multiplies those beneficial lactic acid bacteria that help break down organic matter and neutralize toxins. The recipe is quite simple. Just mix one cup of rice wash water with one cup of milk, cover it loosely and let it ferment for five to seven days. After that, strain off the curds, keep the liquid and store it somewhere cool. When you're watering, add about two tablespoons per litre of your FPJ mix. It's really that straightforward. So, why do earthworms respond so quickly? Well, worms are drawn to food sources that smell of decomposition and microbial activity. You see, they actually feed on bacteria and fungi more than the organic matter itself. When you pour this fermented mix into the soil, you're not just feeding your plants. You're, in fact feeding the entire decomposer community. Within 48 hours, the top layer of my soil became soft and moist. I noticed castings on the surface where there had been none for months. By day three, I found worms right at the surface, twisting in the mulch. The microbes had broken down enough organic matter to release carbon dioxide and heat creating a microclimate worms absolutely love. It's honestly like laying out a banquet of sugars, amino acids and microbial proteins. 
The transformation was dramatic, but, uh, you know, entirely logical. The fermentation process pre-digests plant material. When you add that liquid to the soil, it functions as a microbe starter and nutrient solution. The sugar feeds bacteria, the bacteria multiply, worms move in to feed on them, and the cycle just keeps going. Within a week, the whole ecosystem restarts. Combining this with compost or mulch, well, it really does accelerate results. If your soil is compacted or sandy, it's best to always apply the fermented solution under organic mulch, like leaves, straw, grass clippings, or compost. The mulch keeps the microbes alive by regulating moisture and temperature. I poured my mix under a layer of half-finished compost about an inch thick. The compost gave structure, while the FPJ provided energy to the microbes. You can reapply every week for a month, then once a month thereafter. But don't overdo it. This isn't fertilizer. It's life support, really. The goal is to nurture microbial balance, not drown the soil in sugar water. If it's too concentrated, you risk souring the soil, at least temporarily. So stick to roughly one tablespoon of FPJ and two tablespoons of lactoserum per liter of water applied evenly across the bed. Within a season, you'll notice better texture, a darker color, and that unmistakable earthy smell that only comes from healthy soil. Worms will multiply naturally. You'll rarely need to till again because they'll keep your soil loose and aerated for you. The beauty of this technique is that it doesn't depend on constant outside inputs. You make everything from local materials, weeds, sugar, milk, rice water, the microbes adapt to your environment so they're resilient. Over time, this creates what farmers call a self-feeding soil, one that recycles nutrients internally. After three months of regular use, my dead garden became rich and crumbly. The following season, my beans and kale produced better than they had in years. I've repeated this process across every bed in the garden, and the worm population is now self-sustaining. I haven't bought a single bag of fertilizer since. So, what should you do next? Try it. Don't wait for perfect ingredients. Weeds, sugar, milk, and water are enough. Follow the ratios, stay consistent, and you'll see the difference in days. This is a technique worth keeping alive because it teaches us that fertility isn't something you buy. It's something you grow from within your soil. If you found this guide useful, subscribe to Evergreen Garden, hit the notification bell, and share this video with your gardening friends. Let's bring life back to every dead garden, one handful of microbes and worms at a time.